playing up another Carrie Stevens streamer today. This is the Dave's special. Now, if you've been following along in some of the videos for these Carrie Stevens flies, I also released a tying supplement the other day on how the wings are created on this. I did a supplement a while back on the Canary, which the wings were a little bit simpler. This one has two claret hackles and some golden pheasant. The golden pheasant is a shoulder and then it has a cheek of jungle cock. It's just a little bit different procedure when you're, at least uh, how I do it, there's a different procedure in adding that shoulder to the wing assembly and how to go about selecting feathers and processing feathers to do that. So that's the Dave special. I'll get started tying. I begin my Dave special with my hook on the vise. This is a Partridge CS15 size 2 with a 10x long streamer hook. I have already gone ahead and attached my thread to the hook because I just want to get a nice level body here and rather than have you sit there and watch me do that, which I've done in other videos, I went ahead and attached my thread. For thread I'm using 140 denier UTC in black at this point. I will use some Danville 6 Aught as a finishing thread in just a little bit. I'll go ahead and debarb the hook. And now I'm going to tie in the tag on this. The tag is gold tinsel. I'm using a size 10 Danville silver and gold mylar tinsel. I'm going to tie this in with the silver side up. Getting three or four wraps in to secure that. I will then flip this over. And I'll put in about a half dozen wraps, five maybe. Back to about the point of the hook for my tag. And then back up again. The important thing is that they're nice and smooth here. Don't want any gaps showing the hook or anything. Now I'm, I am using a black thread on this because the body is a tinsel body and it's a gold tinsel. My finger's grabbing part of that thread there a little bit. So I'm using black. If I have a floss body, I would be using a white. Trim away the excess on that tag. I have a tail. My tail is just red hackle. I've got a nice whiting American rooster that I'm going to use here. It has some really, really nice long barbs as part of the reason that I'm going to use that. And they're nice and stiff. I'll take some from both sides. One thing I want to do on this when you Peel these off with the rakish, you get these little curlies on the end. They can kind of bulk up the underside of the fly. So I'm going to trim some of those off. I want to tie this in so the tips are about three eighths of an inch, no more than half an inch, even a little shorter if you want, off the back. Get a few wraps in to secure that. Now I'm going to wrap in forward to put in the tinsel body. Here I am going to flatten my thread. This is just going to help in getting from one end of the hook to the other. And that's the only reason I'm using the 140 denier. You could use like a Danville 3 odd if you want. And you don't have to make these nice touching turns because that tinsel will kind of cover that up. I'm using a 140 denier. You could even use a, like a 210 denier if you wanted to, simply because it covers that hook a little bit faster. 
going from one end to the other. For the body, I'm going to use the same Danville gold mylar tinsel in a size 10. As I've done on some of these other flies, I'm going to take that and I'm going to trim the very end of that mylar into a nice fine point. I want to have a really nice fine point here that I can grab about half of that to tie that down to the shank and secure it. Then this way I can wrap this in with the gold side up. There's no rib or anything on this, so I'm going to put some head cement along the shank. And that will help to glue down that mylar tinsel a little bit, give it a little bit more reinforcement as this is fished so that it doesn't, if it gets nicked or something, it doesn't all come unraveled. I'm going to put a double layer in, keep these nice edge to edge wraps down over the base of the tail and then back up again. Tinsel starts to get short on you as you get up towards the end, like this. Feel free to just get your fingers in here on your other hand and support it every turn or half turn so that it doesn't, you don't know, slip out of your fingers and all come unraveled. That's the other thing that glue will help a little bit with, but even if you're not using that glue, you can get your fingers in from your other hand and just assist that a little bit so that it doesn't all come unravel. So the Dave Special does not have a belly or a underwing or anything. It does have a throat here. It also has, it's finished with a, a black head with a red band. Because it works better if you have the base layer of red and then you actually put two black bands on it. I'm going to change over to my red thread at this time because all I have to tie in here is the throat and then the actual wings. This will give me a nice base layer of red. I can then put the black bands on to finish the fly off. The throat is a grizzly hackle yet that's been dyed yellow. I don't have any uh, grizzly that's been dyed yellow, unfortunately, but I do have something very interesting. This is from the Montana Fly Company. It's a yellow schloppen feather that's actually been dyed with these bars on it. So that's the closest I can get to a grizzly, a grizzly hackle that's been dyed yellow. Now I have three clumps here that I'm tying in for the throat to tie these in so they're about halfway down the shank. I'm going to tie one on the bottom and then one on each side to complete the throat. I 
I want to make the ones on the side the same length. But I'm just going to make certain that they're tied right on the side of the head space. You have to, you can clean any of that up while you're doing this. So the headspace there, keep that nice and neat and level, smooth, so that when you're tying these in, they don't kind of go where they want to go. You want them to go where you want them to go. Tie this one in on my side, same thing, same length as the one on the bottom. This one I like to put a wrap or two in and then grab the butt sections here and just pull it back a little bit. Very easy for this to, to creep over onto the top side of the head. So I just grab those while I'm holding this portion in my left hand, pull those back down, keeping those more on the side of the actual head. Little things like that sometimes you have to do with these, keeping in mind where the thread torque is being applied and how it's going to affect your materials. And now I'm going to clean this up here, smooth it out, and we'll tie in the wings. I've already pre made the wings on this. As I mentioned in the beginning, there's actually a tying supplement that I released a few days before this fly that shows me making the wings for these. The wings are made of two claret hackles, a shoulder of golden pheasant, and then cheeks of jungle cock. Like many of these that I've done before, I'm going to match these up, get the base of those wings together, make certain my tips are together, and with the Shoulders, the one thing with the shoulders here, you got to be careful when you're making these. You want to try and have these black bands that are on the pheasant to, to match up between both sides. That can get kind of tricky. I'm going to trim these back, tie them in one at a time. I'll tie the one on my side first. I want it to be not on the side and not on the top, but kind of halfway between the side and the top, as you can see here. What this does is, you can use your thumbnail to push that back down a little bit. What it's going to do is it's going to, now see, this got cocked out when I pushed it down with my thumbnail. So I'll have to go back and do this again. Just unwrap it. Put a half a dozen, eight wraps in there to hold it. And that should take care of it. That's a little bit better. But what that does by tying it up in this area is, is it gets the hackle in a more of an upward angle like this and it keeps it the um, the wing perpendicular to the actual hook sometimes you have to fiddle with those a little bit i'm going to put this one in i want to make certain my tips are even same thing this is a little long so i'm going to trim the butt ends back a little bit it's another advantage to having these already prepped and glued you don't have to worry about all of that co coming apart when you're fiddling with it a little bit to get it tied in. There we go. See, my tips are matching up. One's right on the other. My black bands match up pretty well on both sides. So that wing went in pretty good. 
with that in, I will bring my red thread, thread, excuse me, my red thread down to the eye of the hook, coming backward, smoothing this area off, getting a nice base layer of red in here to then put the black bands on and complete the head as well as complete the Dave's special. I did not flatten that thread right there before I did that whip finish simply because I'm not worried, concerned about it being smooth at this point. I got some black thread to put on there. This is to secure the red thread and get it secured so that I can put in the black. For black thread, I'm using a Danville 6 aught in black. By the way, the red thread was a Danville 6 aught in red. I don't know that I showed that. But I'll start with the thread back here to get my black band in in the, in the back. The black can very easily mask over the red, so you're better off putting in the red underneath it and the black on top. If you do it the other way around, the black tends to darken up the red that sits on top of it. Three or four turn whip finish right here on that black band. Now this, this happens sometimes, and I could undo that. I think I'm going to now, and I'm gonna undo it to a certain extent and just reattach my black thread to, to secure that. However, keep that in mind, what you could do, which I have done also in the past, is just leave that hang, get some head cement on there, and it will secure that tag in to the point where you could then cut it off flush while you put your lacquer on here to finish this. So that is also an option. But Sometimes that happens with this thread, and especially with just doing a three or four turn whip finish. Sometimes you just get a little bit in there. And I got just a little tag right here, not cooperating. We'll try that again. I'll tighten up my whip finish just a little bit. Maybe make that a five turn instead of four. The trick here is you want to make certain you're not getting any thread wraps into where the red space is going to be. Now I'll reattach my thread right behind the eye of the hook. And I'll get the black band up here in the front. And then here I will use my whip finish tool. Sometimes I'll flatten these. Right now, I'm not that concerned. 
because I will be putting some lacquer on this. These aren't tied in, in such a way as you're looking for a nice, smooth, glossy, shiny head on these anyway. So a little head cement on both sides here. And I'll come back in a moment with some clear lacquer on that to finish off Dave's special. Rather handsome streamer with the claret hackles and the, the yellow grizzly in there and the gold pheasant tail shoulders. So that plus the supplement of how these wings are created that will complete the Dave's special. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.